Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Sunday, February 5th, 2017 edition of VR News. I want to start with the game Star Citizen. An interesting article on Road to VR tonight that may not be that accurate. Let me explain. The article set off some alarm bells today in the Star Citizen community because it seemed to indicate that VR support was not going to be included. And all of that stemmed from an exchange between someone asking senior graphics programmer for Star Citizen, Ben Perry, a question. And then his response, which kind of caused the uproar. Now, the question was, with the new Lumberyard engine and its easier to use integration functions, will we be seeing more talk of possibly moving back towards VR support for this game? His response, sorry to say, do not hold your breath for this. He got into some technical reasons on why it was difficult. And yeah, you know, looking at that, you do kind of get the sense that the tone is VR support uh, is challenging, not a priority of ours, and maybe, but probably not. It's kind of what you get from that. And that's where the uproar came from. There's a problem though, and here's the problem. In the article, Paul James references, he references a crowdfunding goal at the $12 million mark that supposedly says virtual reality will get added to the game. So when I did my research for the article, I started there just to see that. And lo and behold, it makes no mention of VR. All the $12 million crowdfunding goal says is this statement. The hangar module will feature Oculus Rift support. That's it. It doesn't even mention VR support. None of the other crowdfunding goals mention VR support. And if you're not sure what the hangar is, let me explain. If you backed this game via crowdfunding, when the game launches, you get a hangar. It's basically a home base where you park your ship. You can furnish it. It's got that ability. But yeah, virtual reality support via only Oculus Rift for just that one room was the target. So it's interesting because myself, I was under the impression VR was just part of it. And it turns out probably not. It was included initially with the development kit back at a time when the code base was much simpler. Then when it got more complex and engines got changed, they never revisited it. So it'll be interesting. I've emailed Paul just to let him know about that. Looks like he probably missed that $12 million dollar uh, reference that it doesn't mention VR. Be interesting to see where that goes from here, but I am super disappointed and will be even more if Star Citizen does not, in fact, get VR support. All right. Next story. Let's talk about marketing of VR in general. Now, this was originally an article that had to do with virtual reality for today's Super Bowl between the Falcons and the Patriots was a CNET.com article. And at first, that was all I was going to talk about was the Super Bowl and the promise of VR that it really wasn't there for it. And that's what the article is about on CNET. The fact that Next VR and Vogue had agreements for highlights throughout the season. The expectation was maybe the Super Bowl would be the first full-length game that you could view in 360 that didn't come to pass. They've got kind of a cinema mode, but it's not really immersive to that same degree. That got me thinking about adoption rates for VR and how we might be missing the obvious. We as in the general VR community when it comes to marketing these devices. Most of us are here because of games. We've said that before. Most of the marketing for these devices is aimed at us, the gamers. We keep talking about a killer app, but what if, what if that's not necessarily the only key? Imagine virtual reality, you know, really high quality immersive 360 was a capability today. And that Super Bowl was the first major sports game. A television audience of over a hundred million, right? That would do so much for virtual reality PR. It would be I got no words for it. It would just be that freaking awesome because yes, 
the stereotype is gamers don't like sports and you know maybe vice versa which is bs right we all know that i love sports some of you guys are sports guys who game whatever i don't buy that for one second why was there no marketing at the very least i can get why they didn't show super bowl in vr but why not a commercial 114 million yes it's expensive four and a half million i think for a 30 second commercial but that's pretty much money well spent if you've got the right commercial that would have just been awesome had rift or vive or hell even sony done that so interesting but um yeah what do you guys think do you think there's room for marketing beyond just gaming you know, would the right sports event be almost as good? Would it be a second best? This next story has to do with science teachers who got together and built a curriculum, a science curriculum entirely within virtual reality. Now, what they did is they worked with uh, Life Leak, which is an application. It's for HTC Vive, it's free, you can check it out. And they were able to address specific things in there. So one of the things that they quoted as saying is, learning comes to life at the moment the VR headset is placed on the student's head. Students find themselves comfortably strolling through ancient ruins, peering into the animal cell, or floating in space with an astronaut on the International Space Station. Now, just a quick little anecdotal aside. If you had read any of my report cards, or all of them, the most common thing, and I may have mentioned this before months ago, the common statement on my report cards was that I am frequently a disruptive influence in class. I was. And... Yeah, that was elementary school and into my junior high. Absolutely. I wouldn't disagree with that. Part of it, though, was the curriculum. Always had an active imagination. If it was a science course or if it was social studies like history, I tended to enjoy those because I could escape into that reality, the history. I was there in the past with those first settlers of North America, etc. Just as an example. Whereas something like math, formulas bored me to tears and that regular curriculum just didn't work well for me. VR has the ability to just revolutionize learning. Whether it's ADHD, you name it. There's potential with VR to work around that and maybe in some cases through that. And on the other end, out comes possibly a student who's no longer at a disadvantage because he's benefiting from this technology. Because in a lot of ways, and I see it happening slowly, but schools, especially in North America, where they're, you know, not the most well-funded, the non-private, the public schools, that is, you don't tend to find a lot of advanced technology. I remember that when I was in high school. Uh, I know that from when my daughter was in high school, etc. So, hopefully virtual reality makes its way into the classroom and revolutionizes science and history and hell even math there's stuff i know you could do in vr to make math interesting and the last news story this uh was from upload vr it's open source drum application and it's basically a way to type using drumsticks so I looked at that. It was based heavily on Google's own code. They did something very similar, but these guys have done close to that, but released it for free, including the source code, hoping it's going to show up in applications in the future. Now, for me personally, I thought it was creative. I just don't think it's that effective. For me, if I had to type in VR, I guess it depends if you're holding controllers, but if you know how to type, you can pretty much type with your eyes closed. Typing is not something I'm ever, you know, at a disadvantage of when I have my HMD. Special characters sometimes, absolutely. But your basic text typing, not an issue. I'm convinced they could come up with better ways. If they actually 
you know, spend some time looking into this. And there are people looking into user interface stuff. We've featured several stories on the new show dealing with exactly that. The creative minds are out there. We just haven't seen a lot in the way of keyboard support. All we've pretty much talked about is game pads, right? If it's, you know, your Gear VR, your Rift. With Vive, it's their wands. Now, obviously, with Oculus, you have the touch controllers as well, but really no ability for keyboarding. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. And I know I say that a lot, but that's the reality. When we are at the dawn, literally, of something as new as it, and exciting as VR, those are the kind of things that will never stop surprising because there's always going to be a better way, a faster way, a more effective way of doing things. And at the dawn like we are, that pace is going to be fast, very fast. All right, guys, that's it for the weekend news. Tomorrow is Monday. We actually have a crap ton of snow outside. Hopefully enough to not have to leave. Cheers, guys.